In the last lesson, we started you off with a look at basic insurance plans. There are three basic options in terms of coverage, basic medical, hospital, and surgical. These are insufficient in today's world and are not at all comprehensive in nature. They still have a place because these policies put money directly into the insured's pocket and can be used for any purpose. Most use the funds to pay for things like deductibles, co-insurance, and co-payments associated with their comprehensive medical plans. We also reviewed major medical expense insurance, the first true comprehensive any provider health insurance plan. Make sure to review the terms, concepts, and other issues associated with these plans. This includes how deductibles are applied, co-insurance provisions, and the stop-loss concepts that limit the patient's out-of-pocket expenses. We next explored HMOs and PPOs, offshoots of major medical coverage. These plans have different rules, restrictions, and network affiliations not found in major medical. We finished the section with a view of high-deductible health plans and the HSA requirements related to them. Next. We'll study Medicare. In 1965, Congress created Medicare under Title 18 of the Social Security Act to provide health insurance to people age 65 and older, regardless of income or medical history. This created Medicare Parts A and B, or traditional Medicare. Prior to the creation of Medicare, only half of the older adults in America had health insurance. Coverage for the other half was either completely unavailable or simply unaffordable. At the time, older adults paid nearly three times as much for health insurance. Since 1965, the provisions of Medicare have expanded significantly. In 1972, changes were made to include benefits for speech, physical, and chiropractic therapies. During the same year, additional changes were made to add the option of payments to health maintenance organizations and to expand Medicare eligibility to younger people who have permanent disabilities and who receive Social Security Disability Insurance, or SSDI, payments, and those who have end-stage renal disease. This lesson will provide you with an in-depth look at Medicare programs, including traditional Medicare and the legal and societal changes since its inception. We'll also examine additions to Medicare Marketplace that have given recipients additional coverage options. Medicare is financed through payroll taxation, the Federal Insurance Contributions Act. It's important you know the differences between Parts A, the hospital portion, and B, the medical portion of traditional Medicare, as they cover two different needs. You'll learn about Medicare deductibles, cost sharing, benefit periods, what is and is not covered, and how doctors and other medical providers are paid through Medicare. Both Parts A and B have associated deductibles and coinsurance, which will be explained. Facilities and benefits covered by Medicare are fully detailed, including material that shows what Medicare A and B cover, as well as cost-sharing requirements. You'll learn how there is no real limit as to what a Medicare beneficiary may have to pay for any illness or accident. We'll explore the creation of plans that assist Medicare beneficiaries with coverage. First, there are Medicare Supplement Policies, or Medigap, contracts, which have been standardized throughout the industry. Then, there are Medicare Advantage Plans, known as Part C Plans. These commonly go well beyond what traditional Medicare offers. They are private plans that work in concert with Medicare and must be approved by the federal government and the individual states. In 2003, Congress passed the Medicare Modernization Act, this created Medicare Part D, the prescription drug plan. This provides coverage for medications, as traditional Medicare only has minimal drug coverage. It should be noted that some Medicare Part C plans already include prescription coverage.